Do not listen to this recording whilst driving or operating machinery, or if you suffer from epilepsy. Only listen when you can relax, safely and completely. Hello, this is Lena here bringing you this gentle meditation to help guide you into your healing journey. If you've been feeling sadness or despair over the loss of a relationship, if you felt rejected or unappreciated and you're having difficulty moving on with your life. Some of you may be overcoming the trauma of an abusive relationship. I hope that you soon receive some deep healing and emotional cleansing and much needed relief from any emotional storms you might be weathering. Just know that even though you might feel alone, you're not alone in this situation. And many, many others have overcome such experiences, so you can too. And just by being here now, making the most of this meditation, it can happen for you a little sooner, a little easier. And while you're going through your healing journey, I'd like to send you my sincere wishes that you may soon overcome any pain and sadness that you are feeling. That you reach a place of forgiving the past, And that one day soon, all this will be nothing more than a life lesson that is behind you. As you move on into a better life, with a bigger heart and more wisdom than ever before. Some of the ideas that I'll be sharing with you in this meditation will be spiritual in nature and using visualisation. You can repeat this meditation weekly or more often as a support tool and healing ritual until you find yourself in a much better place emotionally. And here we're going to be focusing solely on you and your healing journey. And just know that however wounded you may be feeling right now, it's only temporary. It cannot last because to do so would defy some of those natural laws and it's just not possible. Just as the pendulum swings in one direction, it must swing back in the opposite direction. Until the absence of disruption causes it to settle in the middle. Everything that is out of balance must be returned to balance. Water once again returns where there was chaos. And even water finds its own level. So your emotions can level out and balance too. And so you'll also see that in nature, after a storm, the sun always returns and storms are soon forgotten. So while you're listening here, you can decide to either follow along to the imagery where you can relax fully and embrace this healing session. As you lie down and make yourself safe and comfortable, because it's a good idea if you want to fall asleep later and remain as peaceful as you want to be for as long as you need to be. And before we go on, just close your eyes and take a few long, deep breaths to help calm you and ease any tension. Take a deep breath into your stomach and then your lungs and into the top of your lungs. Allowing your stomach and chest to rise with ease. And when you're ready, just release it all completely. And notice the relief that it brings to your body right away to release some of that tension. And in your own time, just repeat this a couple more times. And just notice how with each breath you can relax a little more than previously.
And just for now, I want you to focus on any comfort that you feel, no matter how small it is. The temperature can be comfortable. Your sofa can be comfortable. Your bed can be comfortable. You can snuggle into your pillow and feel comfortable. Breathing naturally can be comfortable. It's the little things that help ease you into peace and relaxation. And take comfort now that this will get easier and easier as you go. And you will feel better and more positive with time. More positive than you think. And you can heal completely. Now as we are dealing with events that may be recent, the memories of which can be quite difficult to carry, most likely you would be better off without. It doesn't matter if you may have some nice memories that you would like to put away for a while or painful ones that you would like to diminish or forget. Just know that it's your choice entirely. There is no right or wrong way to make a decision. You know that if you choose to, you can always keep the nicer ones. But while you're healing from the more painful memories, it can help a little or a lot if you diminish the pain or the emotional charge that you feel in response to the unwanted memories as we work on this together. So instead of carrying it around, let's make it lighter, more neutral and easy to bear. As we all know that trying to suppress pain is not a lasting solution and it's just like tending to your garden. By removing all those weeds, you can make room for flowers to grow tall. So why not also remove those memories now which you no longer need, that are nothing more than emotional splinters causing sadness or anger, now waiting to be removed. Knowing how much better it always feels when they're removed, Whatever needs to come out will come out. Whatever is good or useful can stay filed away. Now just for a short time I'll lead you from where you are to another place. And I don't know if you've ever sat by an open fireplace or a campfire that you can recall from memory. Or you can simply imagine one. It can be a large fireplace or a campfire, in the sand or a fire pit, or anything else. The energy of fire has been called many things, but certainly never boring, and no two fires are the same. And certainly fires can burn whatever you want them to burn, while the flames can be so mesmerizing. Now why don't you take a seat in front of this fire for a moment. And since it's your imagination, you can decide if you would like to sit there on your own or with a friend maybe. And it would be a good time and place to discard anything that bothers you right now while being comforted by the heat and crackling of a nice strong fire as the sparks fly up in the air carried along by the smoke, spreading the smell of the burning logs, stirring up old primal instincts of fire gazing and examining your internal chatter from a detached distance whilst entering a mild state of trance. Now with your eyes closed you can lean in a little closer to bask in the warmth of the glowing embers in front of you and notice just how delicious it feels and smells. The 
And as I ask you to find a memory that you would like to take and burn, just know that whatever image first comes to mind is the correct one for now. Take that image on the mental screen of your inner mind and let it be as big as it is. Some people can imagine that the image is alive like a motion picture. Or some people imagine that the image is still, like a still snapshot. But you can decide. And I want you to take this image, however it is, as big as it is, and superimpose it on an imaginary clear sheet of cellophane. And just let it fall into the open fire. Watch as within seconds it shrivels and becomes warped, quickly disappearing before your eyes. until there's nothing left of it. Is it gone yet? Good. Now I want you to take the next memory that you don't like and once again let it be as big as it is. or whatever size it is. Let it be either moving or still. Project it once more on a clear sheet of cellophane. and drop it into the fire, like you did before. And watch with detachment as it quickly shrivels up and disappears before your eyes, until it's completely gone. Now you can go ahead and take any other unwanted memories and burn them up in the same way. And take as long as you need to, to carry out this cleansing ritual.
If you're finished now, notice your level of peace or satisfaction rise afterwards compared to before you started cleansing and healing. And that's a good thing. Now even if this exercise brought up some strong emotional responses in you, that's perfectly fine. All of your emotions are valid. And you're still moving forward into healing and cleansing. Notice how that fire still burns brightly as you continue to gaze into the flames, captivated by the dance and flicker of the flames, changing direction here and there, how the heat and crackling of the fire brings comfort in a really good way that only fires can do. Fires can transform and transmute energies. To destroy and transform whatever needed to change has already begun to change for the better. If you perhaps had the friendly company of a familiar face with you, you can thank them and bid them goodbye. And if you are sitting by the fire in solitude, that's fine too. Slowly just begin to shift your awareness from that place in your imagination back to where you are now lying down and just remain in a relaxed, focused awareness for now. And I want you to consider this rather curious question as you're lying on your bed or sofa. What are you made of? When you think of yourself or your body, you might tend to think of flesh and bone, of course, as it would be quite a normal response to such a question. But what other substance or energy makes up who you are? What else is there beyond that, that the eyes cannot see, but we feel is there? It's very rare that people ever stop and ask this question, only once in a while. And I know you know this answer intellectually and perhaps say that beyond that there are molecules and then atoms and then smaller particles still. And all that would be true. Yet can you reach an internal knowing where you can ask that question from a place of emotion, from the heart? Because isn't it rather strange that while you could be feeling a range of emotions and such, it doesn't alter the notion that your body is made of the same substance as the bed or sofa that you're lying on. And yet it's just an object. It can feel nothing. Well, you know you have a conscious and unconscious mind. And you can think and process information, but the object can do no such thing. And yet, you're made of the same stuff. And you're very much alive. And you can feel so many things, so many positive things. And you might think that it's such a strange thing to say because, after all, what do particles and empty space in between, for that matter, have to do with emotions or healing? And what difference does it make to you right now that underneath it all, it's all energy and information, vibrational frequency making things appear solid, like a great illusion? And whatever holds everything together in the same pattern, so it doesn't drift apart, is also holding you together in the same pattern, so you're feeling solid. And while that's all very interesting to ponder, it's also kind of a relief, one less thing to do. But what's the bigger question? How did you end up in this pattern? And if you don't like it, you can change it, can you not? You can change it when you understand that to overcome emotional hurt, especially if it's a pattern that keeps repeating over and over in different ways, it's helpful to understand that what's keeping you stuck in this pattern 
also has an energy and vibration and information. And so here we are in a certain vibration, but of course it can change. Just like everything in nature has its own rate of energetic vibration, so too your emotions have their own rate of vibration. And while strong positive emotions and strong negative emotions are at opposite ends of the same continuum, consciously choosing better thoughts over time and making better decisions over time, your emotions also become more positive and you naturally get pulled upwards, higher and higher. And it's in this space that you find yourself healed, more positive about your future and ready to give and receive love again, if that is your wish, of course. There are things that you see and things you don't see. There are things you feel and things you don't feel. Some of the things that you can feel but not see are bonds or attachments between people. And you don't see it, but you can certainly feel like there is something still there. It's not just in your mind because it's a kind of energy, but not the kind you want. It's possible that over time you may have formed some bonds or attachments to a certain person that hold you back from healing. These attachments are energetic attachments, sometimes called energetic cords or invisible cords. By not cutting away and releasing these cords, you can become bound to a pattern of negative emotions and beliefs. And you can become bound to a certain person in a way that is not helpful to you. You may have heard about invisible bonds between a mother and her children. How a mother knows something instinctively. And that would be an example of a positive spiritual and emotional bond. When you're in an emotional relationship with someone, you form a bond that you can also think of as a spiritual bond or attachment. Through which you give and receive love on a soul level. And in normal healthy relationships, these attachments are beautiful and wholesome. But in a relationship that is toxic and anything other than wholesome and loving on both sides, a different kind of energetic attachment forms that is negative and draining to you. If the relationship is severed in heartbreak or anger, the cords still remain attached and your emotional energy is left bleeding, no longer receiving love. Your thoughts and emotions still influenced by the other person, now becoming negative and toxic to you, until the cords are consciously severed. So it's important to remove these cords and attachments to free yourself emotionally and energetically, to reclaim your sovereignty and strength, to no longer repeat negative patterns of the past, to be completely free of the past. And even if you choose to remain friends with this person, cutting the energetic cords doesn't have to mean severing contact with that person. It simply means no longer choosing to be drained emotionally or investing emotionally, but more of a release from the flow of negative energy that you've been sending to the other person and freeing yourself from the emotional pain. To cut these energetic cords now, although you can't see them physically because they are etheric, you'll imagine them as thick strands of energy or thick ropes attached between you and the other person. And since most likely you can only see the cords in your imagination, however you need to imagine them will work just fine for you. I'd like to give you some options that you can work with. All you need to do is choose what would work best for you. 
So I'll just explain that some people like to call upon their spirit guides to watch over them and to assist in removing these energetic or etheric cords. Some people like to call upon the energy of angels or archangels, but that might not be for everybody. It's also understandable that not everybody can align with that. So if that doesn't work for you, or if it doesn't fit into your belief system, just know that you can do the same thing using your own powerful mind and visualization or imagination to assist you as you follow my directions. Like a kind of empowering do-it-yourself mental exercise. Once again, using your intuition, directing your focus inwards to the quieter, deeper part of you, or calling out to your spirit guides or angels or archangels, whatever choice you decided on. You're going to either ask them to remove and release any and all negative cords of attachment that do not serve your higher purpose, or you're going to imagine pulling away any cords yourself, or cutting them away or breaking off any cords using your wonderful imagination. Removing any cords that are not in alignment with love and wholeness. Any cords that are holding you back or holding you in a pattern of negative emotions. You can create your own visualization of that happening or repeat your own mantra several times. Saying something like, I now remove any and all negative cords and attachments that are not in alignment with love and wholeness and my true self. You can say after me, I now remove any and all negative cords and attachments that are not in alignment with love and wholeness and my true self. If you're asking for assistance from higher beings, then you can say, I now call upon my angels or guides to please remove any and all negative cords and attachments that are not in alignment with love and wholeness in my soul. You can say after me, I now call upon my angels or guides to please remove any and all negative cords and attachments that are not in alignment with love and wholeness in my soul. And while the cords are falling away with the assistance or while you are doing the task yourself of pulling or breaking them away, cutting them off however you want to, removing or dissolving them from your etheric body, Ask that you are surrounded in divine white light to protect and heal you during this process and assist your healing. As you ask it, you bring it down to you. Ask for protection from any future attachments. Ask for assistance in raising your vibrations so that in future you do not attract any more negative attachments. Now some people have difficulty conceptualizing a white light around them. So if that's you, you can just imagine standing under a column of white light that completely covers your body and immediate surroundings in the brightest white light. And you can say, I invite the divine white light to protect me and heal me while I'm removing negative cords and attachments and also keep me protected from any future attachments or any other attachments while I'm learning to become strong and whole again. And I'll repeat it slower so you can follow along. I invite the divine white light to protect me and heal me while I'm removing negative cords and attachments and also keep me protected from any future attachments or any other attachments while I'm learning to become strong 
and whole again. Now from this position that you're in, however you are, is fine. Imagine a column of white light shining down on you. Imagine that it can shine straight into you, coming in from the top of your head, filling your body completely, lighting up any dark corners. This light is your source energy. It is love itself. It has many names, chi or ki or prana. It's your unlimited supply. You already have it in you, it's your life force. You don't need anyone's permission to receive from this supply. You're not taking, you're receiving. There's plenty of it. And when you receive more of it, you're receiving healing. This light is a healing energy that we can't do without. Our spirit becomes depleted without it, so it must be restored. To receive from it, you must connect with it. Whatever you perceive to be broken can be made whole again. Whatever you perceive to be lacking can be replenished. You are receiving love, healing and wholeness. and it enters through the crown of your head, the crown chakra opens to receive it. And as this light fills your body, expelling anything that is negative, lighting up anything that is dark, allow any memories or feelings that you don't want to hold on to, to show up as shadows or dark pockets, and let the light remove it out of you. Let it take it away and send it all into the light. Let any negative energy go up into this light where it can be recycled into neutral energy for the universe to use as raw material. Imagine that you are like an empty vessel. Empty, waiting and ready to receive. It can flow in and fill you from the bottom up. Imagine the light flowing in Rising up your calves, then more and more. Rising up to your mid-level. Lighting up any pockets of darkness. Anything dark that you see, allow it to just leave or be cleansed by the light. You can see or feel more light flowing in and rising up to your chest. Higher and higher. Filling up your arms all the way to the top of your head. Imagine that the light just keeps filling you so that it glows brighter. A glowing white light so strong yet so healing. All of your body is lit up. Any darkness has been washed away in this bright light. As the brightness increases, the outline of your body blurs so that you can't distinguish the boundaries anymore as it glows so strongly from within you that you radiate and still the light expands. As the light expands you become one with the light and you realize you are the light. As you realize you are the light then it no longer becomes necessary to stay within the boundaries of your body You're one with the light and you become boundless. As the light expands, so do you. So much so that you are everywhere all at once. Then you notice that as the light has filled the universe, you are the light. You are limitless. You are the universe. You are love. You are whole. And just be there. And just be. And you are that which you seek. And just stay there for a while. Because you can. It's all good.
Now when you're ready to feel like your old self again, it's quite easy to return to your body. You can ask yourself if you'd rather be your old self or a new self. Or perhaps find your feet again to begin with. Finding how to start stepping into a better you, into a fresh way of seeing the world. Finding that no matter what you previously believed or felt, you can always be ready for a new life. At each moment, life unfolds anyway. Each moment is an intersection where you choose a new direction. And wouldn't it be nice if, as it unfolds, you allowed yourself a new, higher perspective from which to watch this new life unfolding so you can see clearly how much better it really is. And you can feel so much lighter when nothing holds you back. Soon enough you can easily remember how to give back to yourself. All that which is positive and loving. Maybe now all that's needed is to simply rest, switching off completely, enjoying a well-deserved sleep and letting your unconscious just absorb your new awareness. and arrange all these new insights, how and where they should best go, to bring you peace of mind and free you of anything that was holding you back from your happiness. So you can always come back to a lighter place in your heart as you've been shown. Whenever you drift away from your core, from your truth, and you find this peaceful place inside you, So just keep resting now if you wish. Have a peaceful sleep now and always. And take care.